So here's the layers. This is specific to the long-term goal of doing the CNF uh, use case. You have the network equipment, which is going to be the physical layer and the L2 setup. This is going to be different for every installation, especially at customer installations. Packet.net takes care of most of this. You have access to configure some of the things. You can turn on layer two access with packet.net physical machines. These are either going to be already set up uh, in a rack at a customer site, or they will be on packet.net, something where the machines can be provisioned with an API or with some of them pixie booted. So they actually allow pixie booting if you say a set up the layer two. The network card is important not only for Pixie booting, if we're going to do that, and the layer two access, but also for the CNF, if we want to have access to the device to turn on stuff like um, high speed performance memory access with DBDK, turn on specific driver support. If we want to use the NIC, the network card virtualization support, so this is hardware virtualization. This turns on higher performance when you want like multiple devices to containers, the actual network cards support that. So we enable that as needed and then pass it off to the host. The host OS is going to have direct access to the physical devices. Like the There's no virtualization, no containerization. So on packet.net, we run the host directly on those physical machines and has access to the CPU, the memory, network cards. And then it can configure those things directly. So doing specific host configuration, kernel configuration, enabling settings in the drivers for um, for optimizing performance of the network cards. On top of that, we have a container runtime or for VNS, the virtualization engine, and normally KVM for that. Uh, We're using container D for the container runtime. Kubernetes running on top of the container, managing orchestration of the CNS, do OpenStack for the VNS side, network service mesh for setting up all of the layer two and configuration beyond the standard networking that Kubernetes does, high performance options and network cards to optimize them for the actual CNS, most likely, going to be using VPP for the vSwitch to connect into those physical devices. And that would be running on the guest OS and talking directly with the NSM service that Kubernetes works with directly when these containers run. Top layer here is that whatever containers are running, CPE, that'll include like the vBing and other containers. Those are going to be chained with if they're running on the same node, the Kubernetes node, so that's the same physical machine, they would be talking to each other with MIF. If they're on a different node, they would talk over um, the regular network through vSwitch and whatever the highest speed um, connection between the the nodes. That's what NSM would try to do is optimize for that. ONAP's over here because it's not required for any of this. It's something that helps, though. It's an optional component. It allows customers to define policies that say how resources should be used, networking speeds if you have um, throughput that increases to some quantity. could spin up more nodes and more containers, uh, CNS, to handle traffic. Uh, Alternatively, you can define all that in Kubernetes, ONAP would provide you metrics and other stuff. This portion right here is handling the core network traffic at a telecom or a data center. And you want it to be really, really high performance to handle massive amounts of traffic. So this could be hundreds or even thousands of machines across a telecom spread across um, all across the countries, a country, uh, or all across the world. 